Activision presents Mega Mania, a new video game for your Atari video computer system. One, two, three, four, Mega! Mega Mania! Invaders, to cause that roar. Hi, I'll just freeze to the strike zone. Small boo-boo. Many slopes to challenge you. Try the slalom race. Shush! So take it. I'm punching an airspeed. Way to go. So the chances are, after watching those ads, you're either feeling quite nostalgic right now, or if you're anything like me, you're feeling quite left out. This is the Atari 2600. It was one of the first consoles, and in many, many cases, the very first piece of gaming tech for a lot of people around the world. Which, as you can imagine, has given it quite a cult following, with collectors doing everything they can to get their hands on more and more games. I mean, hell, even I've started doing this. I started watching LGR, The 8-Bit Guy, and Tecmo in about two years ago. These are all channels with an emphasis on classic computers. Their interest in all computers sparked in me, and I had to get some. And get some I did. Unfortunately, I missed the Atari when growing up. My generation was more about PS2s and Windows XP, which were both great in their own regard, but it leaves me really wanting to try these older systems. Now, the first thing you can do is try and track one down. After about two weeks of looking, I happened to find one for a pretty good price, only missing a few key aspects like the controllers and a power supply. Then, after another two weeks of looking, and another pretty good price, I managed to find everything I needed. And then finally, after weeks of looking and a fair amount of money spent, I was ready to play some vintage Atari games. But of course, as I plugged it in, my nostalgic dream was quickly turned into a smoky nightmare by some old caps. So I guess what I'm trying to say is, experiencing the classic hardware and games is expensive, time consuming, and just overall risky. Now don't get me wrong, this is by no means impossible to fix, it's just right now I don't have enough time to invest into searching for the issue and trying to fix it. Now of course the easy solution is just to go download an emulator, I'm sure there are many available online, and I've actually tried a few of these and was able to play all the classic games I wanted. But this still didn't feel right because I really wanted to play on the original hardware, not a keyboard. So I thought the common ground solution is to plug an original Atari controller into my PC and play that way. Then I get the original controllers and no issues with caps. I hope. So that's what we're going to be building in today's video. For this project we only need the following. An Arduino Pro Micro, male pin headers, a male USB, and some sort of case to put it all in. So to start off with, we have to use a microcontroller that can be recognized by a computer as an HID, that's Human Interface Device. That means no Arduino Uno, no Nano, and no Mega. We have to make sure we use a microcontroller that is using the ATmega 32U4, and that can be found in the Arduino Micro, or Leonardo, but the Micro is smaller. So for starters, the controller comes apart really easily by removing four screws. Now once inside, I can see that the circuit board literally only has five buttons, four for direction and one as a trigger. On the bottom of the circuit, there's no microcontroller and in fact, there's no circuitry of any kind. It's literally just buttons. Now, believe it or not, but this is actually really great news for us as it means working with this will be a lot simpler as you don't have to worry about decrypting or analyzing any kind of signals. It's just five simple push buttons. This controller is essentially equal to this. So next, I spend some time cleaning up the controller. I start by tearing off this old plastic as these metal buttons weren't really making good contact anymore. My plan is to remove everything, then wipe down the circuit board with some denatured alcohol and test all the traces to make sure there's no breaks. I eventually get the sticky plastic off and then I can start the cleaning process, making sure to not lose any of the tiny pieces. Cleaning old hardware is really calming. Now I want to figure out which traces lead to which buttons. I start by making a little diagram of the 9 pin connector, then I put the multimeter on continuity mode and stick the one probe into the first hole and see which wire matches on the circuit board. When I find a match I label the diagram with the color coded wire. This process does take quite a long time so I'll post my diagram in the video description to save you some time. Once you've color coded all the pins we can start seeing which colors connect to which buttons by following the traces. 
This can then be added to the diagram. And just like that, we know what each pin is and which pins combine to perform a certain action. For example, orange and black is the fire button, blue and black is the right button, and green and black is the up button. So since 9-pin connectors aren't widely available anymore, I decided I would 3D print my own as part of the case. This is what I managed to come up with. It's three parts, the top, the bottom, and the 9-pin connector, and they all fit together like this. Now to add actual pins to our 9-pin connector, we need to take some male headers, slide them into our Atari connector, and then slide our 3D printed connector over the Atari connector. Then we can glue the back of the pins in place and pull the connector off and we should see that it now has pins inside. Now we need to wire the Arduino to the 9-pin connector. It is done as follows. The black wire goes to ground, orange goes to pin 3, green goes to pin 4, brown goes to pin 5, white goes to pin 7, and blue goes to pin 6. If this sounds complicated, just refer back to that diagram from before and you should be fine. We can then upload the code. It's a super basic Arduino sketch basically stating that if pin 3 goes low, to press key 32, which is ASCII for the spacebar, and if pin 3 goes high, to release the spacebar. This is then replicated with all 5 buttons. Oh, and we're also using the internal pull-up resistors so we don't have to worry about soldering any in place. The code is available in the video description and is fully commented for those of you who want to know what's going on. Now lastly, we can start putting the final pieces together. The Arduino is glued down on the bottom piece, then the 9-pin connector is glued in place, followed by the top piece sealing everything together. Now you've probably noticed that it doesn't look super neat at this point, especially because I printed this on a budget printer. But if you saw my last video, you'll see exactly how I cleaned up these prints and got them looking really neat. So after neatening, everything is looking really good. I tried to follow the Atari's color scheme to the best of my abilities, but for the most part, it's just black plastic with fake wood grain, which is kind of hard to emulate. So I looked to the controller for inspiration. I found that on the controller, it had an orange and black color scheme, which is what I ended up using on my adapter. I did also make a few other variations just to see what looked good. Okay, so let's take a look at the operation. We plug the adapter into our Atari or Atari clone controller and then plug the micro USB cable into our computer. The controller will show up as a keyboard. Up is W, right is A, S is down, and D is left, with fire being the spacebar. Next, we need to open up the Atari emulator of choice. I'm going to be using the Atari JS, which runs in my browser, and configure the controls to my controller. And just like that, it works. But again, this adapter will work with any software that allows you to map the keys to a certain key binding. And if you have an OTG cable, you can even plug it into your phone and play classic games that way. Overall, it's a fun little project. If you want to build your own, there's a detailed written guide. Or if you'd like to buy one, they're actually for sale. Both links are in the video description. I really enjoyed messing with this old hardware, so I decided to make my own second channel devoted to old techie stuff. Check out the link in the video description to subscribe if these things also pique your interest. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.